Perhaps I'm a bit behind in bringing this up, as I've only just now watched the latest promotional video for Truth and Inference. Nonetheless, I found some intriguing points in the video that I'd like to share with everyone. Before diving in, I want to clarify that my observations and interpretation of the storyline in Truth and Inference are based on my own understanding. I'm not an expert in the lore of Truth and Inference or any Identity 5 storyline for that matter. Therefore, I'm open to suggestions and corrections. Now, let's examine all the intriguing points I noticed in the promotional video. We gather here today with profound admiration and fond remembrance to honor the lives of those who perished as they returned from Okinos 25 years ago. They were pioneers of science and our dearest friends and family. March 13th, I accepted my mission. Disguised as a collector, I boarded the exploratory vessel the Isambard. Here, a taxidermist who is obsessed with all marine life. No pushing. Next! A cartographer who believes in the visions her father witnessed firsthand at sea. But the strangest one of all is a wealthy sponsor who keeps himself out of the media. The truth behind the tragedy 25 years ago is anything but simple. The culprit is somewhere on this ship. Hiding among us. Our destination is clear, and the route is unchanged. I believe we will all find what we seek on this journey. Truth and Inference is a side story in Identity V, centering around Detective Inference and Lady Truth. They frequently find themselves entangled in enigmatic cases that require efforts to solve. In the latest installment of Truth and Inference, titled The Voyage of Oceanos, the story unfolds aboard a paddle-powered steamship. Detective Inference will be delving into a case surrounding a tragic ship incident that took place 25 years before the events of the story. From the promotional video, it's evident that Mr. Inference has been enlisted by a mysterious figure to probe into the shipwreck tragedy from 25 years prior. To conduct his inquiry, he assumes the role of a collector and joins the expedition aboard the SS Isambard, which is described as a replica of the sunken ship involved in the incident two decades ago. It seems likely that the individual responsible for the shipwreck incident 25 years ago is on the ship. Alternatively, given that the characters involved would still be young 25 years prior, there could be others present with connections to the incident. This could have been hinted at when Inference mentioned that the culprit is lurking somewhere on the ship among them, but what culprit is he referring to? And what exactly occurred on the SS Isambard? To answer that question, let's first explore the characters in the story. First and foremost, we have Detective Inference in this Truth and Inference story. He's taken on a mission from an unknown source and has boarded the SS Isambard to uncover the truth behind the shipwreck incident that occurred 25 years ago. Next up, we have a taxidermist with a keen interest in marine life, known by the codename Perpetual Flower. Additionally, there's a female cartographer named Mercator Projection who places trust in her father's first-hand account, although the specifics of that account remain unknown, at least for now. Later on, we encounter the trip's sponsor, Phantom Sail, who prefers to avoid public attention. 
from the costumes, it appears we also have some members of the ship's crew, Charles, Leo, and Demi. Additionally, there's a journalist or photographer named Alice, along with a mysterious individual Alva and a clerk named Keegan. All of them, including Detective Inference, boarded the SS Eisenbard. However, on a particular night, Charles discovered that Mercator Projection had been killed. Detective Inference deduced that the culprit must be one of the characters mentioned earlier. Unraveling the identity of the culprit may also shed light on the mystery surrounding the shipwreck incident he's investigating. Aside from the main storyline I mentioned earlier, there are some additional trivial details that might be worth exploring. First, let's consider the SS Isambard. The name immediately brings to mind a notable historical figure, Isambard Brunel, a renowned English engineer. Brunel's expertise lay in shipbuilding. The second intriguing detail I noticed in the story is a specific book, which upon closer inspection appears to be Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This classic novel recounts the adventures of Captain Nemo and his submarine, Nautilus, as they explore the ocean depths. Interestingly, this parallels the theme of exploration aboard the SS Isambard in our story. Could there be a connection between the two narratives? Well, my dear viewers, only time will tell. The third interesting detail I stumbled upon is the name of the cartographer, Mercator Projection. This name appears to be a reference to the Mercator Map Projection, which is commonly utilized in the maritime world as a navigational standard. Additionally, there's a reference to the sea monster Kraken. In mythology, the Kraken is depicted as a massive squid or octopus that preys upon ships. Interestingly, this creature is featured in Jules Verne's book, as mentioned earlier. Furthermore, there's a snapshot referencing an octopus associated with perpetual flower. Could this suggest that the taxidermist plays a significant role in the story? Lastly, there's a reference to the RMS Titanic disaster. In the continuation of the story beyond the promotional video, Inference reads a newspaper mentioning a novel about the most enormous ship that is said to be unsinkable. Lady Truth then remarks that the ship still ended up sinking in the end. This scene appears to be a direct reference to the RMS Titanic, which famously sank in 1912. Years before the actual incident, an American novelist, Morgan Robertson, wrote about the sinking of the largest ship in the world in his book, Futility. Perhaps there really is a connection between this truth and inference story and the Titanic as well. Honestly? I'm confident that many others may have a more thorough analysis of the story overall. So, once again, I'm open to any suggestions. Feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, as always.